This here is a very historic Creator motherboard. Now, this might be the last Creator motherboard that has DDR4, which is very, very cheap right now. And if you're a creator who uses Adobe Creative Cloud, then this motherboard is gonna cost you about $25. Bargain. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So if you want to check out the latest pricing for this one, I'm going to leave the links in the description below, but I'm looking at the new egg right now. And this is $189. And if you discount the Creative Cloud membership, then this is literally $24.99 is what this is actually going to cost you if you're already paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud, which makes this laptop very, very affordable. So what is this laptop? This is the ProWide B760 Creator D4. There is the Z790, which is the higher end or the highest end ProWide motherboard, which we have 10 gigabit Ethernet and all sorts of things in there as well. I'm using that one personally. I've done lots of videos on the channel. But the main thing is this D4 in the end there, which means that you can use DDR4 for this motherboard, which now doesn't seem like a, like a big thing, but if we are getting the refresh CPUs, the 14th gen of Intel for the same platform, which there are rumors that this can happen, we might be able to even get 12th, 13th and 14th gen on this motherboard, which will look very, very good, especially if it supports DDR4, which I think they're going to do as well. If, you know, backwards compatible, that will be very, very good. I'm not sure if they're going to release uh, a B860 um, motherboard or B760 plus motherboard for the 14th gen as well to support something extra, but this looks very good. So inside the box, usually there is a, a Wi-Fi antenna, but not on this motherboard. Underneath, we're gonna get control center, your DVD, CD for drivers and things, which I really don't understand why this is still happening because you can literally download them off the website. It goes easy. Um, user guide, Asus web storage. And on this side, ooh, we do get the ruler as well, even with the cheaper model. One M.2 screw. We have the M.2 NVMe stand uh, of stickers. So if you've got a one-sided M.2, then you can use these stickers. The front panel connector extension, SATA parts, and then one more M.2 extension uh, sticker. So as always, we get a really nice design of this motherboard. As you can see, the heat sinks, and uh, I mean, I'm just a big fan of the ProArt design. So this is the LGA 1700 socket, which supports Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. Probably the 14th gen as well. We'll see about that, not sure, but there are rumors that this can happen. There is four DIMM slots. These support DDR4. And because the integrated memory controller for the 13th and 12th gen are very, very good, you can pretty much put any DDR4 in there, whatever kit you find, it's there. And if you want 128 gigabytes of DDR4, it's gonna cost you pennies compared to what you did it like a year or two ago because DDR5 pricing is now lower, but doesn't necessarily always give you more performance as a creator. Right now, this will make it very, very um, cheap and affordable, especially for the whole system. Let's look at power connectors. There are two EPS power connectors, one of them eight pin, one of them four pin for the extra. Don't really need the four pin extra actually, but for some reason it's there for overclocking, but you don't really need overclocking for this motherboard either. You've got one 24 pin ATX power, but you don't have the front panel a power connector. Some people say that the Z790, which has an extra six pin PCI power connector is for the PCI slots. It isn't actually. It is only for the front panel USB-C port to give you quick ch quick charge for up to 64 or 65 watts. So you can like charge your phones or something like that from the front panel very, very fast. So it gives you extra power in there, but this isn't included in there. So then going from the top, we can see some uh, PWM power connectors. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven all together. Every one of those has fan curves that you can adjust on BIOS or in some of the systems, apart from the AIO pump, which is this header in there, and that is 100% speed all the time. Moving on, we've got some RGB headers. 
12 volt, 5 volt, another 5 volt, another 5 volt. So three 5 volts and then one 12 volt RGB connectors. Then we've got some front panel headers. This one is type A header and this is only five gigabits in speed. And this one is type C front panel header, which sees USB 3.2 Gen 2 X 2 slot means up to 20 gigabits in speed, which is very, very fast header. So means your front panel can go very, very fast. So if you've got like a fast, um, USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 uh, SSD, external SSD, for example, you can get some fast speeds in there. We've got four SATA ports in there. Then we've got our front panel headers. There's one temperature sensor over there and then one clear CMOS sensor there. TPM header, which I don't really know why you'd need that because it's already built into the CPU and BIOS and anyway, but extra TPM header. We've got USB 2.0 headers here, two of them. We have a COM debug header in there again these are not very commonly used for most people and then we have a thunderbolt header in there which is very interesting actually even though this motherboard doesn't support thunderbolt header but you can get an external like thunderbolt card that you can plug into one of these pci expansion slots this one or that one and then you can get thunderbolt which i think is actually a better idea because I've got an issues with my Z790, which is the, you know, bigger brother of this guy. And because of the back panels only support Thunderbolt USB-C and aren't compatible with non-Thunderbolt USB-C devices, it's actually a bit of a downside. And I'd prefer to have just normal USB-C ports in the back rather than in the front because basically my because if you don't have thunderbolt headers or thunderbolt devices or thunderbolt you know things that you need for the thunderbolt you know USB-C ports you can't really use it for anything else you can but they're so handicapped and only transfer like 30 40 megabytes per second compared to like 300 400 that i can get from uh, the front panel USB-C header so I like that there's this extension so you can add Thunderbolt there if you need that. Comport and then the front panel audio pods in the very last in there. So there are a few M.2 slots as you can see. There's one in here on the top which has a heatsink. Then we have one in the middle there which doesn't have a heatsink for some reason. So they've cheaped out for that. The heatsink only has a thermal pads and heating on the top, not underneath. And then the third slot there has also thermal pad only on the top and not underneath. All of the slots actually supports, uh, support two, two, one, one, or like long SSDs. If you have like Intel Optane or something like that, they're all supported in there and shorter. There is also one of those small Wi-Fi or Bluetooth card headers there. If you want to add your Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to this because it doesn't have it included, you can add it, add it in there and then plug like the antennas in the back or something like that. So you can add it if you wanted to and then keep the cost down, you know, and not going with the Z790. So in terms of bandwidth and sharing, there's a few things going on in terms of the expansion slots, which um, are very important for you to understand. This top slot is connected to the CPU and will always run PCIe Gen 4X4 slot, obviously backwards compatible as well. This secondary slot, M.2 and secondary slot, is actually PCIe Gen 3X4 slot, but if you have anything plugged into the Wi-Fi card slot here, M.2 Wi-Fi card, or this PCIe X1 slot, which is this one here, it will share bandwidth with this secondary slot, which means that this M.2 SSD will start to run at PCIe Gen 3 x2 speeds which is only up to 1600 megabytes per second but at the same time we've got pca gen 3 basically lanes one of them running in there and one of them in there for the bandwidth so if you want you get 10 gigabit lan put on the bottom there or like a thunderbolt card or something like that so it's it's kind of okay and then the third slot in here will run to the chipset so both of these are actually to the chipset it's because the b760 chipset isn't as good as the z790 chipset you'll start to lose some of the bandwidth of some of these things here but the third m.2 slot is bca gen 4 x4 slot and will run to the chipset and always will run pca gen 4 speeds but the most interesting thing here is these expansion slots as in here because both of these are x16 slots Xeon. so basically you can have a gpu on the top 
running x16 you know pca gen 4 bandwidth to the cpu so basically this top slot is actually gen 5 pca bandwidth 16 pca gen 5 lanes to the cpu that's very interesting because if you want to run for example some pca gen 5 m.2 storage or something like that you can put your graphics card on the bottom slot which also supports pca gen 4 x16 so both of them are x16 slots there's not like x8 x8 if you plug something in in the top or in the bottom right okay it's supposed to be x16 slot here bca gen 4 to the chipset but i think there's something dodgy going on because x16 slot should have pins all the way through this slot because it's just pca lanes they, that's just how, how they work which you can see on the top slot there there are pins all the way through if you look at this slot in there you can only see that these lanes there can you see they only go up to this point in here and then the rest of this is just empty there's only one pin in there and then one pin in there so there seems to be some kind of conflict what the motherboard and what, what they say here and actual physical lanes physical cables that go to these or connectors so let me explain what's going on basically asus uh, has made a bit of a typo in their like marketing and some of the manuals basically so this slot is actually only x4 compatible even though you saw this thing flickering on the screen earlier that said pcie gen 4 x16 slot and then in the brackets it said supports x4 mode the thing is it supports x4 mode only it doesn't support anything else so it's something that you can misread technically not wrong but then it's just a bit confusing so basically it's like a full size slot if you need this like the locking thing on the full size slot but it's only pca gen 4 x4 compatibles and that's why you can see only that many pins so it doesn't have pins all the way some of the manual actually it's very confusing in some of the manual it says it supports two x16 um full slot graphics cards but it doesn't actually because the secondary graphics card would start to go only x4 speed if that makes sense so um that's what's going on and lastly let's take a look at the io of the motherboard we've got one hdmi port and then one display port. So two video outputs. We've got four USB 2.0 headers, type A ports. We've got five gigabit USB um, ports there. One, two, three, four. And then one 10 gigabit USB-C. There is no video output through USB-C on this motherboard. Then we've got one one gigabit port LAN and then one 2.5 gigabit LAN. We've got all the audio ports in it, as well as all, um, optical out. So the IO is kind of okay. I wish there was some more like type A 10 gigabit ports, but the type C there and the front panel type C, I guess they will do the trick. So all in all, as you can see, this motherboard is quite interesting for creators because it offers, you know, a lot of features. You can get two graphics cards, what they promise. I'm still not sure how this works. Maybe you don't need all of these pins, but it kind of buffles my head. I don't know why. You've got a decent amount of M.2 slots now. I wish there was four, you know, it would be better, but you can spec it out quite a lot. And if you take the price of your Adobe Creative Cloud membership, you can see this will cost you $25 and it's probably an iconic motherboard because they are not going to make any more DDR4 motherboards probably going forward after next gen. So this could be the last DDR4 motherboard. If you want to check it out, I'll leave the link in the description below. And if you do want to build yourself the best bank for bot creator PC, then check out the build guides in the description below. This video for you, whatever your budget is, check them out. I'll explain everything down there. Thanks guys for watching. Bye bye.